teens and young adults in East Germany, in the GDR, they definitely used youth culture as a form of rebellion and a form of political rebellion on occasion uh, against the East German state. So oftentimes teens would chafe against the fairly regimented life uh, that they were expected to lead of uh, school and the FDJ events. This is the organization for youth in East Germany. And so beginning in maybe the mid seventies, you get a lot of young people who go to all of the events they're supposed to go to, they participate. Uh, and these would be like rallies or fundraising drives. Uh, but as soon as the event is over, they take their FDJ shirt off, the blue ones, and they would crumple them up and shove them down to the bottom of their backpack. Uh, they just did what they had to do, what they were required to do. Um, a really interesting subculture arose that is specific to East Germany. I don't think it exists anywhere else. This is called the Blueser subculture uh, because they followed bands that played blues music. And this is in the 1970s and they had a kind of typical outfit. So they would wear, which was half fashion and half practical. It's actually very practical. They would wear um, these uh, big rain jackets that were are like army surplus from the West actually, and climbing shoes. So actually what you would use to climb a rock wall uh, and jeans, of course. And for men, long hair and beards. So it is the 1970s after all. And the great thing about this big overcoat is that you could sleep in it and you had a little satchel and you hitchhiked your way to the uh, concert that you were going to. A lot of these concerts were held out in rural areas. So away from the um, most of the watching eyes of the authorities. Uh, and some of the young adults would even bring their kids to these concerts uh, and sort of hitchhike their way around East Germany looking for a little bit of adventure in, uh, in the summer months. And that was a way of, of you could say protesting by dropping out, essentially, just doing their own thing. There are also a lot of uh, Western cultural symbols that could be used as small protests in schools, for example. So uh, I talked to one man who, in his school in East Berlin, he, and this is in the 1970s, he wrote some lyrics from a Rolling Stones song on the chalkboard. Uh, in his classroom. And he knew that he would be punished for this, uh, did it anyway, of course. Uh, and he was in fact punished. He was not allowed to study English uh, any, at any point during his career, um, his school career. Uh, some, other, some other kids and teens would uh, hang protest banners from their bicycles. Uh, they, um, of course, would wear interesting styles that were considered fairly Western, right? So punk, goth, um, these types of, of really outrageous looks. And it also wasn't just teens that were using youth culture as a political tool. Foreign governments and even West German rock stars instrumentalized uh, youth culture and rock music to, to question the absence of real freedom of expression in East Germany. So for instance, uh, in the early 80s, there is this West German rock star named Udo Lindenberg. And uh, he, he actually had an exchange of letters with Eric Honecker, the leader of East Germany, uh, and ended up talking his way into a short performance at a peace concert that was sponsored by the FDJ, this youth organization in the, in the GDR. Um, and that was incredibly unusual at the time because he was unpredictable and had written a song that made fun of Eric Conacher personally uh, and was, was really quite, quite embarrassing for Honecker. And then by the 1980s, uh, you have also a lot of uh, dissident pastors in the evangelical churches in East Germany. And they would do interesting things uh, like in East Berlin, there were a few pastors who started holding blues masses 
where there was uh, there were prayers and it was a service uh, like you would get normally at church, but it was interspersed with really generally good blues music, occasionally rock. Uh, sometimes they would play other types of music as well. And then there was a lot of politics. So these services were protected because they were under the umbrella of the evangelical churches, but they really attracted their audiences by offering a really great youth cultural entertainment that young people in the GDR couldn't really find anywhere else.